Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. As always, leaving a like, leaving a comment or subscribing, all these things do help out the channel's algorithm immensely. Please understand that I am not, nor have I ever been a professional nor unprofessional financial investment advisor or anything of the sort, please invest at your own discretion, at your own risk. Nothing said in this video is financial advice. This is going to be a bit of a weird video, but I think it's a topic that I want a lot of people to actually understand and pay attention to. Many, many, many years ago, I'm gonna tell you a story. Many years ago, I remember watching, I don't remember what show it was. It was something about rich people, something about wealth, something about so-and-so. And I remember getting quite annoyed because I put a reflection to myself and I said, why am I not rich? Why do I not have money? Why have I not achieved what they have achieved? I couldn't understand for the life of me how these people kept on making money, how they made more money, how they're, you've heard the phrase, have your money make you money. It made no sense to me. Am I gonna scream at this pile of money in my hand and simply say make more and it begins to multiply? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm sure there's someone who chuckled and he went, <laughs> that's stupid. No, but really when you think about it, if you're not into finance, how does any of this make any sense? You don't actually understand what it means to make money, to keep money and have your money make more money for you. That's the point of me making this video, to actually explain to you, this is why I wrote not clickbait, because I'm going to give you exactly the steps that you need to be able to make money and to keep money and to maintain the money and have that money actually make you extra money. It's not extremely difficult, but there are steps that you have to follow that many people do not actually end up following. The number one thing, and this is going to sound completely stupid because you hear it all the time, Buy on the dips. If the stock market is going down and the cryptocurrency market are going down and we're at our lowest prices in a year and a half and prices have fallen by 99%, what would you logically assume would be the best mode of action to getting or staying into the market for the next bull cycle? The idea is buying on the dips. When you look at trading volume, for the stock market and for the cryptocurrency market, when prices are down by 60, 70, 80, 90%, trading volumes, the amount of people who are putting money into the market, drops by 60, 70, 80, 90% as well. When the market goes back up and prices are higher than people saw before, this is usually when people start buying, they never buy here. I made tons of videos, I tell you. I buy whether the market is up or whether the market is down, but when the market is down, I buy far more aggressively because this is the time when, you've heard it before, this is when millionaires are made, this is when the big bucks are made because you can see the prices are down so low they're worth nothing. But usually what it is is that people get afraid of putting their money into the market when it's too low because they're afraid of losing more. The long-term goals no longer enter their head. It's this irrational, if you will, thing that pops up into their head. I have, a, I have a friend, I don't think he's watching, hello friend, who always does the exact same thing. If you see that something was a thousand before, not financial advice in the cryptocurrency space, and it falls down to 89, I tell him, hey dude, I got some yesterday. I think the price is really cheap. His message is always the same. What if it falls down to 87? I watched the YouTube channel, they were talking about it was, it was falling down to 70. I don't know if I should buy right now because what if the price falls even more? There was something, and I don't know who you are, whoever you are, thank you, hello. There was a YouTube channel years ago where someone said something along the lines of, it makes no difference if you believe that Bitcoin is going to half a million dollars, whether you bought that Bitcoin at 950 at $1,000 or $1,200, there's no real difference. If you bought it at $1,000 and it goes down to $600 per Bitcoin, but shoots up to $80,000, you still made an immense amount of profit. And this is what a lot of people forget and they miss out on. I mentioned this also before on the other app that I'm always on buying stuff, the NFT app called Vivi. I get it, NFTs aren't for everyone. This isn't me trying to tell you about NFTs, it's more of a, 
We've seen before during the last bull run what happened to the prices of a lot of these things. There were a lot of NFTs, especially the Star Wars one, the, the golden Star Wars figures. You were able to buy them for $60. A lot of the prices of them well, the one I can remember the most in my head, I believe it was R2-D2, like the walking robot, I think that's him. He went up to around, I think, to $5,000 for that one NFT. His current price is roughly around two or 300. I don't have the app with me, I can't tell you the exact amount, but it has fallen significantly. And I was trying to explain to a lot of other people, a lot of people on Twitter get it. There's a whole community of people who are buying up everything on the app because they understand what is potentially maybe going to happen once the market actually ends up going back up. It's always the same. I know it sounds simple, but so few people do it. The idea of buying on the dip is that you can mathematically calculate where we were before, how much we go up typically or generally during any type of a bull run or bullish whatever period over the course of a two year time frame. People so rarely actually buy the dip. They get in once we're around 60% up, we go to these brand new all time highs, we go up a little bit higher and then prices begin to collapse and they go, why did I profit like everyone else? Because so few people, I know I'm reiterating it, people don't buy the dip. It is so incredibly important to be able to do so. It's, I, 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 can't, I, I can't stress it enough. Number two is patience. The idea of getting rich to a lot of people especially within the cryptocurrency space, is instantaneous. I'm glad that a lot of the hype boys, the Lambo boys, whatever you want to call them, have more so left the space because so many people are constantly told that within crypto, throw your money into it, dude, in six months, you were going to be on a beach with a hot girl with a hot car. I don't know how you're getting the car onto the beach, but it's going to happen because you're going to have all the money. And people fall into this idea. I get it. You can get quite wealthy or rich off of crypto if you choose the right coins and have the actual patience to be able to wait out a certain time frame. The general idea is if you start putting money into the stock market when you're around 18 years old, by the time you're in your mid 40s, mid 50s, you are consistently putting in money that you can't afford to lose, what have you, you'll have a huge amount of money. In crypto, our cycles are not eight to 12 year cycles like they are for the stock market. We get two to four year cycles. Very quick, very vicious, prices go up, prices slam down for two years. Prices go up, prices slam back down. It's the same thing over and over. It is a shorter time frame, but a lot more stress for a lot of people. This stress causes people to get out of the market because they lose any type of patience. If you see that, you put $1,000 into the market and that thousand only becomes $23,000. A lot of people get very upset. Dude, people promised me millions of dollars. They hold on to that money waiting to become a millionaire, don't cash out, their investment goes back down to 850, they never touch crypto again. The idea is you have to find what really works. Find the big name companies, find the big name brands, find the big name coins and stay into them keep reinvesting into them. Once again, I have to keep saying it, not financial advice because so many people, you know, life and all that stuff, but it takes patience. All the millionaires and billionaires that you see on TV did not get rich overnight. Part of the problem is, is that you keep seeing their story over and over in the news and you see this person who looks ragged and, and, and disheveled back in the 90s and you see them now in 2022 with how much money they have, that didn't happen overnight. They had patience, they put money into these markets, they kept on reinvesting and this is where they currently are right now. The entire thing that keeps me investing is the idea that one, not only do I not wanna work until I'm 90, but I see that it's working because of my patience of the last 10 years of investing and then getting into the cryptocurrency market. It's just a waiting game. It's just mathematics. It's just like actually having patience to know that your money is growing. And a lot of times people lose that patience. I film with natural light, so if it's super bright, it's not me, it's, it's the heavens. I can't really stop it, but it's also like gently blinding me as well. Number two is patience. You have to have patience in order to get anything in life. This isn't any different. You're not gonna enter crypto. Four months later, you're not going to be a hyper mega super millionaire worth $40 million. It may take a couple of years and I know that, no, that should not hurt to hear that. There's a difference between you working until you're 90, 
getting money into by the time you're 50s or in 60s from the stock market, or maybe having to wait four to eight years. Do you want to you want to work into your 90? That's what this is what you're aiming for. I mean, it, it, you know, life is different for everyone. If 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 that's what you're kind of going for, then then please, by all means. Number three is don't be greedy. That is going to be the most difficult one for a lot of people. Remember my example of you putting a thousand into the market, it goes to 13, 14, 15, 16 thousand dollars. People forget to take profits. Often. People forget that you put a thousand dollars into the market. It did a 13x. You can't get that from the stock market in a year. It's nearly impossible. Unless you find the right company, and please don't write Tesla in the comment section. Give me, give, me, give me 35 other examples, please, because I can give you a 35 cryptocurrency coin list that will definitely, or have definitely in the past, gotten a 13 to 35x. Don't just say Tesla, because I had that conversation with someone else and they went, well, Tesla did it. Keep going, give me other companies. Right, exactly. Learn to take profits. You will not instantaneously become gigantically wealthy over time, but that 13,000, even more so, if you just pull out your original investment and let the, you know, let the rest ride, you still made tons of money. So many people have put money into the market and have made six figures. It happened a lot. It happened in 2017, 2018, 2020, 2021. People put money into the market. They make six figures for whatever coin they put their money into, whatever the coin might have been. But their aspiration was to make millions at one time. The coin begins to go down. They get devastated. Dude, I lost all my money. You put a thousand into the market, made six figures, and nothing told you just to take out 50 grand? Nothing. No one, no one gave you a whisper in your ear, dude. Take out half of your money. Take out 20K. 20K when the market goes back down, you have 20 times as much as the original time to invest in the market when the market goes back down because you're buying at the dip. 20,000 from nothing. I personally, this is me myself, I like the idea of doing half. I never like the idea of selling everything. Just a personal thing. That 50K does wonders during the next bull run. If you were able to turn that 1,000 into 13,000 or into 100K, multiply that by 50 next time. Always happens, over and over. I get the idea of the greed. People want, I get it, I'm human, I understand, I also wanna make an enormous amount of money. But so many people put their, there was a, the situation with Terra Luna Classic at the beginning of 2022. There were so many YouTubers, this is something I will never understand. I don't think my brain or my heart could actually take it. YouTubers who were telling other people and showing other people in some instances, dude, I have five million worth of Terra Luna. I have $17 million worth of Terra Luna. If I have five million in any coin, I'm selling half of it. I'm reinvesting that into property and anything else that I can. The other 2.5 million, let's see where it goes. It's this hyper greedy aspect, and I'm reiterating it multiple times because I know that it's gonna happen to somewhere out there. I'm trying to warn you for the future. You are going to get into this market. You're gonna start putting more money into it at your own discretion because it's your money. You're gonna make a huge amount of money, something life-changing that you won't realize was life-changing until the market actually goes back down. It happens to everyone. It's just part of the market, but understand that this is one of the main things that actually allows you to be rich. You will have thousands more than you did before. You just have to know when to cash out and you have to be okay with it as well. This is something that also gets a lot of people. If you have a thousand in the market and the market goes up to 20,000 and you pull out half, you made 10K. Incredible. If the market goes up to 30,000, you can't get upset. You're not psychic. You can't time the market. You can't tell the market when it's going to go up or when it's going to fall. 
Be happy that in an instant, you made $10,000 as opposed to worrying about the fact that you could have made more money if you had stayed in the market because eventually the market does fall and you look back over at that 10K and say, I still made 10K when I could have made zero. Very important. When I Googled years ago, how do rich people become rich? How do rich people make money? Why do the wealthy remain wealthy? This one threw me for a loop because it seems so obvious now when you watch, I, I watch a lot of, uh, I wouldn't call them investment things, but like YouTube videos, sometimes documentaries of, I used to watch a lot of stuff with people who like won the lotto and then subsequently how they lost their money in the lotto. And they talked to them years later and they didn't know, like they simply did not know because how could you, how could this have ever, think about everything and every single thing in pop culture that you see when it comes to money, it's always the same. I can't make it rain because I'm holding a piece of paper. But you, people always say like, spend it, spend it. I'm gonna make more money, I'm gonna be, still be rich, I'm gonna buy five cars, I'm gonna buy, and it's this idea that money literally is falling from the sky. I'm rich, I'm famous, it's gonna last forever. And then you see there are a lot of rappers and celebrities who are now driving Ubers and Lyfts. You can find it online. I'm not gonna name anybody, you can find it. Like people have videos of them like, sir, is that, is that you? It's, it's them. They lost everything because they didn't pay attention to number four. When you make profits, you have to roll it back into something that will make you more money. This is how you begin the building of wealth or beginning to become rich. It is the simplest thing, but so many people don't know it. And when you hear it, you go, ah, of course. If your thousand became 20,000 and you pulled 10,000 out of it, what would you normally do with that 10,000? Someone said, spend it. Bless your heart, I hope it works out for you. The ideal thing to do is you roll that money into something else that makes you money. You would put five, not financial advice, you would put 5,000, or rather I would, you would put 5,000 of it into dividend stocks. These are companies from major brands, major names, that pay you for holding their stocks. Right, it exists. I know it sounds crazy. They'll pay you a certain amount of money every single month for you actually holding onto their stock. They don't want you to sell. They want you to continue buying more. And as a gift, they go, they give you a couple of cents every three or four months, depending on the company. There are certain, there, there are certain people who are actually in these markets, I mean so heavily, they have a dividend portfolio. They'll be paid out every single month through their dividends. The other 5,000, depending on how risky you are in the market, in the cryptocurrency space, we also have dividends. It's called through staking. You take your cryptocurrencies and you put it into the market or into the blockchain. You kind of lock it there and it begins to make you money. There are a lot of coins that do this. One of the most popular ones is Ethereum and Cardano. There are, of course, many more, but for the sake of the video, you understand and every month, and especially for crypto, and sometimes every week, you get paid out. The money that you made is now making you more money. What happens if you took 100K and put half of it into stocks and the other half into crypto? You are getting paid out every single month for doing absolutely nothing. This is how the rich remain rich and continue to make money. You have not lost your initial investment, but you are making money every single week that's constantly being paid out to you. And sometimes people leave that money there and it re-rolls back into it. Or, hear me out here, over the course of a three to four year period of you continuously doing this, the money that you make, you throw it into real estate. You buy a studio apartment. I went over that in a couple of other videos. A lot of people assume that when you get into real estate, these YouTube channels sometimes drive me crazy. You do not have to only buy a multi-family home to get started in real estate. Whoever told you that is lying. They're trying, to, they're trying to glorify and mystify something that not everyone can do. You do not have to buy a six-family home to start with. You can buy a studio apartment. People still want to live in a studio apartment and rents are also sky high right now. You'll still make really good money. The money that you get from that after having bought that Portion of it can go to your mortgage. If you have a mortgage, the rest of it, you re-roll it back into something that makes you money. Look up assets that make you money. You'll find them online. They usually tend to go to uh, index funds that have dividend funds or stocks that have uh, uh, dividends as well. 
The way to continuously make money is to continue, you have to take the money that you have and make it make you money. You have to roll it into an asset that pays you monthly or weekly forever. And as you get more money, you buy more of those. This is one of the things that I, I think fuels me as well is because people in my family didn't know about this in the 80s and the 90s. If they had, we'd be a very wealthy family right now, so I'm trying to do it myself for my future kids. I wanna make sure that they are completely set. I'm still gonna make them work and go to school and all that stuff just because it's who I am, but I want them to understand that after that, they can live a free life if they choose to do so because of the investments that I have right now. You buy assets that continuously make you money and you keep looping this over and over. This is how you keep hearing these people have like 12 homes and stuff like that. Yeah, because they're doing it over and over and over. They've been doing it for about 20 years. It also comes into the patience aspect. It's not going to happen overnight, but hear me out here. From where you are right now, exactly where you are in this moment, do you wanna be in that exact same position in 20 years from now, or would you rather work investingly over the next 20 years to make sure that you are wealthy within 20 years. Not, I, I was gonna say, do you wanna remain broke? It's not that you currently are broke, but it's like, do you want exactly what you have now and nothing else? Or do you wanna make sure that you're investing for the next 20 years so that you are nowhere near this current position, that you have tons of money, you have tons of property, and you have tons of assets that are paying you out all the time. This is how the rich get rich and remain rich. A lot of people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of other musicians or whatever, get into the position where the millions of dollars are thrown at them. And they have no idea what to do with it. They have no idea what an asset or a liability is. So they spend all their money assuming that the next $100,000 check is going to come in until it doesn't. And then you watch a documentary about them and you go, that's so sad, I don't, I don't get it. They had millions of dollars, how are they broke? That's how it happens. I hope that you've all enjoyed. I hope that you take some of this to heart. As always, I hope that you do your own research. Learn how to make money. Learn how to make money work for you. Learn how to make generational wealth that lasts not only from you, but to your kids, and to their kids, and to their kids. Spread the wealth, as it were. Spread the knowledge, I don't know. Do hope you all enjoyed. Do hope you all are having a great day. A great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.